Senator Latz, well, that's, that's good news then. Um, it appears that we aren't going to be uh, collecting data on people and having the government be uh, its own executive branch arbiter of, of people's opinions and their political opinions because that was the original proposal. And uh, I still don't completely understand what the governor is going to do with this language. Um, civil rights trends pursuant to this chapter is what the language says, analyze civil rights trends. And uh, I certainly hope that the use of this money is limited to that and that it doesn't get used differently. I, I expect the people of Minnesota will be keenly looking to make certain that government is not uh, becoming the thought police that I know a lot of people are worried about. So the other, uh, one of the other provisions I talked about was the, uh, the provision that begins on uh, my line number here. That begins on uh, line four, 438.17 in the bill. And that is related to uh, the removal of language um, around classification of pedophilia as a protected class, or pedophiles as a collected, protected class. And I'm going to turn to the language, and I know others have talked about it, but the, I apologize, members, it's 522 pages. So the language members um, removes the statement that says sexual orientation does not include a physical or sexual attachment to children by an adult. And that's the language that others have shown concern about. I have a great deal of concern about it as well. So one of the questions I had is where did this language come from and what was the motivation behind it? And I, I don't have all the answers to that, Mr. President but it went into statute in 1993 and around that time it was right during or shortly after the time that Jacob Wetterling was abducted in Minnesota that was in 1989 and in 1994 uh, then US representative Jim Ramstad authored the Child Sexual Abuse Prevention Act of 1994 in Congress so it appears, Mr. President, members, that this language was put in statute simply to protect children from people with pedophilia um, behaviors or tendencies. And for this to be pulled out of statute, I think, should be alarming to the people of Minnesota and alarming that we have it in a public safety bill to bring forward a measure here that will make children less safe. Again, the, this is a public safety bill, Mr. President. It's going the other direction. It's making people less safe. So there's this thing called minor attracted persons that uh, I have been reading about. An individual actually wrote a book on it. I've got the title of it here somewhere. An individual named Alan Walker wrote a book called A Long Dark Shadow, Minor Attracted People. And they go on to talk about and actually advocate for people with pedophilia type tendencies or desires to, to bring them into a protected class. Members, I think we need to be aware of what some of the things might be happening in our culture that are very, very negative and destructive to the young people in our state. And to have this removed from the bill, what are we doing? What are we doing? The gun control in the bill. Members, 
Violent crime in Minnesota and the United States has been increasing. Well, it increased for a long, long time, and actually it tapered off in the last several decades, and now it's starting to spike up again. But there's a study from, uh, put together by the researchers at John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health and the University of California at Davis Violence Prevention Research Program. Not uh, conservative bastions, if you will, Mr. President. Um, these are kind of some of the leading gun control uh, thought um, uh, places in our country. And in 1990, or 91, I believe it was, the state of California passed universal background checks and also additional penalties and removal ability for people to own firearms with certain misdemeanors. So it's even, it was even more and more uh, gun control than we have in that background check provision within this particular bill. And In that study, it was published in the Annals of Epidemiology, February 2019. The abstract says, um, again, in 1991, California implemented a law that mandated a background check for all firearm purchases and prohibited firearm purchase and possession for persons convicted within the past 10 years of certain violent crimes classified as misdemeanors. The results, Mr. President, published in the abstract, I will read them. The simultaneous implementation of criminal background checks and MVP policies was not associated with a net change in the firearm homicide rate over the ensuing 10 years in California. The decrease in firearm suicides in California was similar to the decrease in non-firearm suicides in that state. Results were robust across multiple model specifications and methods. That's what they learned about California's, one of their latest um, gun control efforts. We have, Mr. President, in the state of Minnesota, there was a summary put together by the research department and the other body, Mr. President. It's 155, no, oh, excuse me, 113 pages long. And it represents, Mr. President, the firearms laws we have in the state of Minnesota. We've got lots and lots and lots and lots of firearm laws already in the state. So what's happened to crime rates? Have we looked at that? So per 100,000 people, we can take a look over time. Of course, we've got, we've got um, gun control that has happened both on the federal level and on the state level. In the state of Minnesota, um, the first uh, real gun control effort began in the 1920s, at least that we've got recorded. Uh, back then, um, we had, um, the first one was 1925, Make, Start, Make State Parks Gun-Free Zones. That was one of the first gun control efforts. Um, in 1933, the Minnesota restricted or banned automatic firearms. And then in 1945, uh, we placed limits, or our state placed limits on the transportation of rifles and shotguns while exempting handguns. Back then, Mr. President, the homicide rates per 100,000 people was 38. The aggravated assault rates was 171. That was in 1945 in the state of Minnesota. So after 1945, we had a bunch more laws that came forward. The Minnesota Gun Control Act of 1975 instituted various regulations on carrying possession and use, the transfer of firearms from FFLs or federally licensed dealers to private individuals, 
restrict classes of people from possessing and using firearms. That was the Minnesota Gun Control Act in 1975. 1977, short-barreled shotguns were banned. 1977, another restriction, clarified transfer rules and instituted a waiting period for some pistol transfers. 1982, another uh, prohibition came, limited exemptions of transportation of pistols. 1985, um, actually an expansion that goes the other way, uh, preempts local regulations on firearms. That was a preemption statute that many of us are familiar with, 1985. 1986, uh, recodified some uh, new permit carry laws. Uh, 1987, another restriction, limit restoration of rights for those convicted of violent crime. 1993, prohibited public carry of rifles and shotguns. By 2003, Mr. President, we had gone from 38 homicides per 100,000 people to 123. That was in 2003, a 323% increase in the state of Minnesota. The aggravated assaults went from 171 in 1945 to 7,333, a 4,200% uh, increase in the year of 2003, Mr. President. So we had some expansion of uh, firearm uh, freedoms that actually went the other way. We had uh, concealed carry expanded in after 2003, 2005, uh, the concealed carry was expanded and made Minnesota a shell issue state. We saw more expansion happen in 2009, allowed the transportation on cased and unloaded rifles and shotguns in limited situations. And during that time, members, uh, the aggravated assaults remained about the same. The homicides went down to 94. In 2015, it was 97. And then since then, we've come back up. There was restrictions placed again in 20, 2019, where we expanded firearms and eligible persons to harassment. Of course, we know what's happened over the last few years with the expansion of crime in the state of Minnesota. That's reflected in the numbers. Uh, back up to 122 again in homicides, 6,882 aggravated assaults compared to 171 in 1945. More and more and more gun control and crime rates skyrocketed throughout that period of time. Federal level, federal level pretty similar. 1934 members, the National Firearms Act was passed back then in 1934 on the national level. Uh, 3,421 homicides per 100,000 people. Uh, went up to, um, we had a bunch of restrictions and it happened fed federally in 1938, 1968, another one in 1968, 1986, another restriction in 1988 and 1990, more restrictions in 1993. By the time we got to 1994 and banning semi-autos that look like assault weapons and large capacity ammunition feeding devices, we went from 3,421 per 100,000 people, Mr. President, to 21,314 per 100,000 people in homicides within the United States. We saw that taper off then over the early 2000s and 20 teens. Today we're at 15,000, actually 2022, we're at 15,214 homicides per 100,000 people, a 444% increase in homicides per 100,000 people between 1934 with all of those gun laws in 2022. During that time period, Mr. President, members, the aggravated assaults per 100,000 people went from 23,390 in 1945 
to 660,860 in 2022, a 2,825% increase in the aggravated assault rate within the United States of America from 1934 to 2022. All of these additional gun laws placed on our statutes with the false promise that it was going to somehow reduce crime when in reality crime was increasing the whole time. We are coming again with false notions that we are somehow going to solve the violence within Minnesota by taking guns away from law-abiding people and in this bill actually decreasing the consequences for bad people that do bad things to other people. We're going the wrong direction, Mr. President. Mr. President, members, let's defeat this bill. Let's allow a bill to come forward that Republicans and Democrats can put together, one that will actually increase public safety and fit the narrative of the budget area that we are dealing with, instead of creating one that punishes the good guy and gives a jail get out of free card for the bad guy. That's what this bill does, Mr. President. We're going the wrong direction. Please vote no. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Dames. Well, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, I just wanted to bring up a couple of things. I'll keep this short. But, uh, you know, the language in here.